Hi, this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and today I'm going to be presenting a game from the 2010 Olympiad from the women's side between Natasha Bojkovic, um, international master and woman grandmaster from Serbia, and Natalia Poganina of Russia. And so getting right on with it, e4, e5, and now knight f3, knight c6, and uh, black is kind of angling to take things into something of, uh, of Roy Lopez, and white obliges. And so with a6, knight f6, and so um, quite simple, the Roy Lopez has been around for quite a long time in chess, and both sides are fighting for control of these center squares. White is trying to put some influence by attacking the knight, and black is simply developing logically. And so with castles, there's a couple of lines. Um, the Burnland defense, for example, has been extremely popular taking this guy. Uh, that's, you know, a typical after the exchange variation. There's, there's some complicated variations here, but generally not, um, I don't know, this goes into a different line. And so Poganina with uh, b5, she kicks, kicks the bishop out. And now plays bishop c5. So I've seen this line. It's been fairly topical. Um, some of the higher levels recently. And um, quite simply, black is is trying to put some pressure on white. And it's, an, it's a more, more aggressive move for black to play. And um, I, I kind of like the positions that black gets. And so what typically occurs, so d3 to, um, you know, maybe, maybe rook e1, black can kind of try to force a little repetition of moves and maybe try to achieve an early draw. Rookie two in these type of positions, uh, typically not so good for, for white. It's a little misplaced for the rook. So that's the idea behind d3. And castles, castles, and now a4. So this is uh, a typical typical undermining move by white in these types of positions. And so black responds, rook b8, because, you know, move like d6, well, this, this pawn is pinned. And that's just not going to work. So with rook b8, um, b4 should, should also be mentioned in this position, although it seems like it's not a very popular move. I think white typically responds with a move like a5 to uh, kind of try to isolate this pawn here. And now the c4 square is going to be a pretty nice square for a white piece. So uh, b4, I'm not such a fan. So with rook b8, black is entering the archangel variation, um, which is, uh, a, is a bit of a very topical line. If, if you'd like to look at some other games, I believe Grandmaster Alexei Shirov at the top level is, has been playing the archangel uh, a good amount lately. So rook b8, and now we're kind of seeing what the dynamics of the position are, are resulting. So um, black has got this isolated pawn. More or less, not isolated, but a weak a weak pawn on b5, and in exchange he's uh, well she has some ideas of attacking the white king, maybe bringing the knight to h5, coming into f4 as well, and so with bishop e3, um, simply white is aiming to trade off one of black's better pieces. And in other variations, I've, I've looked at a little bit in this line. I, I don't really play the Roy Lopez much myself, but I've seen Bishop G5, and Black has responded quite aggressively. Let's say with H6, Bishop back, uh, maybe something like um, D6. And after a move such as Knight D2, um, I've seen Black play G5. And definitely quite an aggressive idea, but I, I like the idea for Black. So that, again, results from playing bishop g5 for white. Instead, bishop e3, definitely a logical move. If black takes this bishop, then f takes e3, and this opening, sure, the pawns are doubled, but this opens the f file for the white rook, and this pawn on e3 is definitely more of a strength than a weakness as it covers critical outposts for black on d4 and f4. So um, just, just something to keep in mind. So instead of taking the bishop, Poganina plays d6 and um, simply doesn't want to drop a piece. And if if white takes on, on c5 here, then after d takes c5, um, yes, the pawns are doubled, but this is going to open up the d file for black and also enhance control of the d4 square. So again, a case where the doubled pawns are not always bad. Um, sometimes they can help you know, controlling the center and controlling critical squares. And so instead, knight d2, and both sides are simply trying to develop their pieces logically, 
and uh, fight for control of the center and fight for control of the initiative, which is becoming more important with every move. And so bishop b6, so black decides, okay, maybe I don't want to double my pawns right now. Um, and now bishop takes b6. And so obviously not a takes b6. Uh, there's, there's no need for that. So rook takes b6. And the rook is slightly misplaced on b6, but... I guess um, I, I guess Poganina judged that this was a little better than having the pawns double D take C5 by leaving the bishop on C5. And so now C3, black, white is maybe making a, a hole for the bishop to come back to C2 and also preparing D4 to um, start start marching some pawns in the center. And so queen, queen E7 was played by black here. And just, uh, it's kind of a waiting move. It's kind of, maybe maybe the rook wants to go to d8 and play d5. Um, the queen is also defending the e5 pawn. Kind of a waiting move. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of unclear where this bishop is going to be placed best. And also something to note, I, I believe I've seen in some other games, knight e7 as an idea here. I like the idea for black because the knight is going to swing around to g6 and f4 is going to be a fantastic square for a black knight. So definitely something to, to keep in mind. Um, the 97, the, the maneuver, and also maybe opens up this, this rook. Maybe it can someday swing across the third rank. Just a thought. So queen e7, kind of a waiting move. Develop, uh, put your pieces in the center, getting ready to attack. And knight h5. So this was really the point of queen e7. Because uh, if knight h5 a move earlier... Well, maybe we could trade some trade some pieces with a move like uh, knight takes black can e black can take either way, and possibly something like this. It would seem to favor white more than anything else, as the black queen is really going to be misplaced along this d file. It looks like it just maybe loses an exchange here. Um, the queen doesn't really have anywhere to retreat to, and wherever it's going to go. It's going to get hit by a double attack, it looks like. So, going back. So, th so that's really the real reason of, of queen e7. I missed that the first time around. So, knight h5 again. Not not such a good idea. Knight takes. Yes, knight takes e5 is also an idea. But after queen takes and, and knight takes, it seems like um, it, it seems like maybe white's got a pretty good game here. Maybe can even just sacrifice a pawn. There's ideas of... Um, rook to a8. I like white's game. He's got good pressure. So going back, that was queen e7, and now rook e1. And now knight h5. And very simply, if knight takes e5, well, then queen takes, and the knight's going to be defended. Maybe d4, and uh, black's just going to be up a piece. So it doesn't, doesn't quite work. So knight to f1, a, a very... It's very common motif in these types of positions to reroute a knight to f1, maybe bring it to e3, possibly g3. The d5 and f5 squares are great for the knight here. And so now knight f4, and in this case, white just wants to get rid of this knight on f4 because black is getting some very attractive attacking prospects. Also, eliminating the threat temporarily of bishop g4. So queen f6, and maybe... Black is just trying to reroute the queen here and, and get it to a more active square, maybe trying to bring it to uh, g6 and start putting some threats, uh, focal point being g2. So knight d5, understandable move. White wants to trade off that active knight on f4. And so now knight takes. Knight takes on d5. And I'm assuming... Well, a couple for a variety of reasons. If bishop takes d5, first off, black can try to well, black can double white's pawns and, and have a very nice pin on that f3, that f3 knight. Um, also, bishop takes d5. If black so chooses, maybe bishop g4, and then the, and then the next move would be knight e7, rerouting the knight, possibly for for a very strong attack, um, trying to get the knight to h4 or f4. So instead. White played e takes d5. Well, the problem with e takes d5 is it's not so apparent yet. I, I think uh, maybe d4 here was a good move for White. It seems like d4, maybe bishop. Um, you know, I mean, this is this is going to win a pawn, so it doesn't quite it doesn't quite seem to work as as uh, 
as you know, it doesn't quite seem to work for Black. I mean, it's going to give up a pawn. I'm not so impressed. So I, I think that the move here for White was maybe d4. It, it seems to me that was one of the better ideas in the position. Um, but it seemed like Bojkovic, as White, didn't really sense the danger and played rook a7. And now with rook b7, again, I think uh, here, here she played rook a6 in the game. So trying to finesse black and, and activate the rook with tempo and maybe thinking, okay, b7 is misplaced for the, for the black rook. Um, maybe the bishop wants to go there. I, I don't know. So that's what it seems like. Here I think, again, rook takes b7, now, now bishop takes in d4 as uh, taking on, on d5 doesn't quite work out tactically for black. Something like this, and takes. Doesn't quite work here. So going back, rook a6 was played by white. And now knight g6, and it's very tough for black, for white to get away with playing d4. If, if d4 here, very simply, bishop g4, and it's tough, uh, it's tough to play for white. Now knight h4 is threatened, knight f4 is threatened. Um, it's just going to be very easy to play the attack. And obviously, D takes E5, trying to undouble the pawns. Well, that's just going to walk into it. So, White played um, kind of a strange plan here. Rook E3 and Queen E1. So, to avoid doubling of the pawns, getting out of the pin. Well, the problem is Queen D8, a nice as attentive move by Poganina is black. Rook E3 is going to run into this F pawn advancing with tempo. So, now Knight E2, Bishop back to D7. Because um, bishop back to d7, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe the immediate f5 possibly is going to run into f3 here. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it still seems okay to me either way. But bishop d7 maybe a somewhat more careful move. I'm, I'm not quite seeing the tactical refutation. Maybe just bishop d1. Maybe that's what she was hoping to avoid. That's what it seems like. So bishop d7, queen d1, and f5. So now the pawns are rolling, and rook e1 to anticipate. And now king h8, nice move. Maybe wants to play c6 in the future to open it up. It's always nice to have time for the subtleties. And now knight f3, and now with f4, knight f3, I guess trying to play d4. Now f4, and knight back to d2. It's not a good sign. And uh, now knight h4, and... Uh, black is just going to come crashing through with the, the attack. And it's very tough for white as this bishop is a stand, uh, a bystander as well as the rook on a6. And so f3, <laughs> queen g5, and the attack just plays itself. Bishop h3, nice move. Knight e4, okay, it's a good square for the knight. And this was, I guess, white's idea now to play g4. And, well, I mean, there's a couple moves that are pretty good here, but Poganin is the most direct. Opening up the F file, and this, this is a little cheapo trap set by Bojkovic. And um, not to get too excited, if Black had played Knight takes, looks like it wins an exchange, but surprisingly, we'll get back ranked. And that's going to be all she wrote. So instead, um, Poganina is Black, the calm rook, rook B, B8, and there's nothing White can do to defend F3 and the attack on G3. So after King H2, Knight takes f3, white resigned uh, in light of the decisive material lost. So a nice game by Poganina in the 2010 Ol Olympiad. And um, this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and thanks for tuning in.